What's up, folks? Andy here with Andrew Gaming. And tonight, I want to talk to you about something that I haven't done a whole lot of... Actually, I haven't done any coverage on on my channel so far, and that's World of Warcraft. I will tell you, I've been a World of Warcraft player since 2004. I remember when the game first launched, I went out, I bought a hard disk copy and the Braddy Games Guide, I believe it was. And I remember I was at work. And I took my lunch break, and I went and I purchased the game and the strategy guide. And I remember just pouring through that strategy guide for hours and hours, thinking of how cool this game that I was about to experience looked. And at the time, I was a passionate Final Fantasy XI player. And Warcraft represented something new and different, and kind of a whole different direction for the genre. So I was very excited to see what happened. Now, as we all know, classic Warcraft was definitely a completely different animal than it is nowadays and i will say that i have left and come back to the games more times than i've probably played any other game ever aside from final fantasy 11 itself my relationship with world of warcraft has been one of love and hate mainly because i've spent a lot of time playing the game i've maxed out multiple characters in every expansion that's ever been released and i've raided in every expansion save vanilla. I never hit level 60 in classic Warcraft, but I did hit level 70 in Burning Crusade right as the Burning Crusade was over. And I did Karazhan, and then Lich King was really when I hit my stride and started playing really hardcore. Raided a lot in Lich King, even more in Cataclysm, and unfortunately after Cataclysm I had some real life issues that kicked in that caused me to to leave the game for uh, a considerable amount of time. But I did come back at the end of Mists of Pandaria, played that for a while, really enjoyed it, right through the content update and expansion release of Warlords of Draenor. And guys, Warlords of Draenor rating broke me. I just could not find my stride with it. I wanted to. I wanted to love it so bad, and I just couldn't. So I played Warlords for about half of the expansion's life, and then again, stepped away from it for a bit. But when the Legion pre-patch, or pre-expansion events started happening, and the demonic invasions started occurring, I saw that as a prime opportunity to level all of my characters that were sub-100 up, and I took full advantage of that. I'm not going to lie. I actually had quite a few of my friends playing with me at the time, and we just killed those invasions. And I went into Legion fresh, excited, and I will say Legion did not disappoint to begin with. Now the beginning of my problem in Legion was that I didn't have a good comfortable raiding guild that I was playing with. I'll say after Warlords of Draenor I kind of disconnected with most of my dear friends in Warcraft. And most of them left the game honestly. Uh, Warlords of Draenor just broke them and... They didn't even get back in on Legion. And so I found myself kind of alone, save having my buddy trip with me. And we just couldn't get into the Mythic Plus scene. Uh, I, I couldn't get... I didn't have the time to, to devote to raiding like I used to. Uh, having a really time-consuming job and a wife and two kids. It, it was just all I could do to keep up with running dungeons themselves. And so... I did finally step away from Legion, having maxed out three characters, really enjoying the content, but knowing it was probably time for me to uh, pursue something else. And I will also say that Ark Survival Evolved became a big thing for me at that point in time as well, and so I was playing that a lot. So fast forward to the new expansion, and as of recording this, it is 8.25 Central Time, on August the 13th, 2018. Now, I have no idea when and where you're going to be watching this video. But I will tell you right now, I am standing on the precipice. I am standing on the precipice of Battle for Azeroth. Now, I want to share my thoughts on Battle for Azeroth. What I think is happening versus what everybody else think is happening. And I want to make a prediction right now. Now, I don't know that this can be considered spoilers because, honestly, I'm shooting in the dark here. But I have a thought that I really want to share with you guys. 
So to start, I've been a Horde player since day one. I love the Horde. I've always enjoyed playing Horde characters. Towards the end of Legion, uh, well, towards the end of my time in Legion, Tripp and I both decided we were going to roll Alliance characters and give them a shot. And that was very enjoyable, but we never got past about level 40 or 50 with them. So most of my time in game has been completely and totally devoted to the Horde. That being said, I was pretty disappointed with the burning of Teldrassil. I was reasonably concerned about the storytelling, just like everybody else that's covering this content. But then I started thinking. So I'm going to rationalize a few things with you guys real quick, but there's something I want to point out right here in the video that you're watching as I'm recording this that is the cornerstone, and it may be a really far-fetched cornerstone, but it is the cornerstone for everything I think is happening. So if you'll pay attention, here in just a moment, Anduin is going to tell Sylvanas that she was the one that burned Teldrassil. And when she does, I want you to pay really close attention right here to Jaina's face in the background. Alright, now if you need to back up a few seconds and watch that face in the background again, I encourage you to do it. You put the torch to Teldrassil. But I failed those who burned. Alright, you've had your time. Now here we go down the rabbit hole. Miss of Pandaria represented Garrosh Hellscream being the final boss of that expansion. Garrosh Hellscream, even though no one really liked him, for better or for worse, was the war chief of the Horde. I'm not going to tell you that Blizzard hasn't made some questionable decisions in their storytelling, but at the end of the day, War of Warcraft's the most successful MMO in the entire world for all of history for a reason. Blizzard knows what they're doing. They're not new at this. They're exceptional at this job. There's no way that we're going to turn another war chief into the prime villain of an expansion, or even a minor villain of the expansion. So let's put a couple of pieces into the puzzle right now and think about this. In the two Warbringer mini videos that were done recently, and they're incredible if you haven't watched them, for the love of all that is holy, go find them and watch them. They're exceptional. In those videos, the first one was a folk song of Jaina basically raising the this this uh cold terras ship out of the out of the ocean and one of the scenes that we see in this video is Jaina raising that ship up out and then bringing it and and basically using it to attack the horde here's the couple of things that i, I want to pitch your way and let you chew on mentally for a few seconds it's already been said that the old gods have a little bit of, of, of place in Azeroth right now. We know Queen Ashara is going to be one of the first raid bosses, and we know that the Naga are connected to the old gods. So my question is, let's think about Jaina and how she fits into all this. Now we know that Jaina's been uh, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs for a few expansions now. And don't get me wrong, Jaina's an incredible character, but she's kind of lost her crap. Now that being said... Jaina hates the Horde. She used to sympathize with Thrall, but ever since he stepped down as War Chief, Jaina's really, really amped up the anger level. And at this point, she doesn't like the Horde at all. Now, that being said, there are a lot of, of key things that were said in that folk song on the first Warbringers video that make it sound like she's really adopting her dad's prejudices against the Horde and really letting those come into play. If I'm Jaina, and I see that the Horde is getting stronger under the leadership of Sylvanas, I'm going to find a way to exploit her. I'm going to find a way to corrupt her, and I'm going to find a way to make Anduin, who, like him or hate him, is an extremely, well, let's just call him the leader. Anduin's a good guy. He's been through a lot, but he's got a really, really good head on his shoulders. He's also got a, a lot of great leadership backing him up right now. If I'm Jaina, and I know that Anduin really would prefer peace over war any day of the week, then I've got to find a way to really, truly turn the Alliance completely against the Horde. What better way to turn the Alliance against the Horde permanently than to seek the power of an old god 
and use it to corrupt the war chief. Now, all I'm telling you is Sylvanas is undead. Like it or hate it, that gives her a connection for corruption. If Sylvanas was corrupted and basically tricked into burning Teldrassil through Jaina's influence, then that completely changes the dynamic of this expansion. And again, I encourage you to really go back and look at Jaina's expression when Anduin points out that Sylvanas was the one that burned Teldrassil. All of those things also come into play that the name of this expansion is the Battle for Azeroth, which is very, very easy on the surface to interpret as a battle between the Alliance and the Horde. But if you'll remember, there's a Titan living inside of this planet, and its name is Azeroth. And if an old god is trying to corrupt that Titan, then it really would be a battle for Azeroth. Wouldn't it? Just some food for thought. I want you guys to know that I will be playing Battle for Azeroth. I'm I'm considering doing some expansion content and kind of covering it in my own twist, but I may be a little behind the pack. I hope this video gives you guys a little bit of insight, and I hope that you can maybe think outside of the box. I'm not telling you that I'm right, because God knows I'm probably not. But I would love for everybody to just stop and consider that there are a lot of other possibilities outside of Sylvanas is just a jerk and burned it for no reason. We have to broaden our minds here because there's no way that Blizzard employees are making millions of dollars every year by thinking, let's just let Sylvanas burn the tree. Come on, guys. There's more to it. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy the night and enjoy Battle for Azeroth. Until next time, I'm Andrigan. Deuces.